The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Good morning, everyone. Monday, Monday, the uh, 6th of May. We're looking at the Dow. Let me just get to it right now. I've got some requests, so I've just started looking at those. Let's go to the Dow, up 150 at 38,827. What is really fascinating about this and what I said to subscribers over the weekend when I did my uh, uh, video, my overview video that looks back at what's going on, what stocks we have, what positions we have, what we're looking at, what we want to buy. Um, I showed this particular pattern in the Dow. Where, let me just go here. I think it's much better to put it into context. And context says that to show you this, this particular pattern, look, there's a pattern that we call the dreaded H. Why? Because if you come straight down, you make a rally there's to peak A or B, and then fail and take out the left side low, as you did in all of these arch formations, that's that takes you to lower lows. But if you hold above that left side low, there's a there's a point of contact where um, if you had to touch that left side low, that, that essentially wanes the energy. But what happens is if it moves and closes above the arch, oh, let me go back to this. So this arch high, if it stalls just under or close, you can go from a lowercase h to a lowercase m. But patterns repeat over and over, and it says in this particular pattern, if it holds well, and in fact, I could have drawn in a trend line here. I didn't do that. But the reason being that I was looking very positively at the market after it closed above on Friday, closed above the arch high, is that when that happens, all of a sudden, the H pattern can form a really interesting cup formation. That cup formation produces energy to the upside, especially if the MACD works, crosses positive. Then you have to wait for the nine period moving average to cross positive. It has, but we haven't even had an hour into the day. So I'm saying that as of now, could be different in an hour's time, but as of now, as we were anticipating, the Dow's nine period exponential moving average in the daily chart is cross positive. And that's important. What was lagging is a stochastic at 62%. When you have a move like this, you really want to see the stochastic. And I said, what I want you to see is a stochastic in the 67% area or maybe higher. That would be having everything in alignment. Look, the, the relative strength index is moving higher. Um, everything now is in sync to say that this is a gray leg B. But it could very well become, at the end of the day, blue, meaning you've now gone from a buy signal and there's a chance that you can upgrade it to a buy mode. As of now, I have to wait for the day to finish to say that we've got a buy signal, especially with this L showing here with a long, meaning a long position in the 9 period moving average crossing positively. So that's the start. I, I can go through all the other charts. I don't want to really do that. What I also wanted to say is, I drew this pattern in in the daily chart, in the weekly chart, because I said that I'm calling that a phantom A, and we've got to a peak D only because the YM, the Dow futures, legitimately had a peak D, and the Chapman Wave peak D is where other things can happen. Look, there's your peak D at 40,358 in the YM futures back, uh, I think it was just about the 1st of April, and look how he shopped. He came down right to the 200 period moving average. Well, that says, in this context, that nine period moving average held with all those one, two, three, four, not today, but four, five, five weeks where you went underneath the green nine period moving average, touched the 14 period moving average, closed under the 14 period moving average, and that the nine period moving average didn't go negative. That's a positive. So that's that. Now let's look at the um, uh, ES, which is the E-mini futures. That did a peak D in the uh, weekly chart and um, held very nicely. Look at that nine period moving average holding above the 14. So here again, I'm suggesting from the, the strength and from the weakness in the semiconductors, I, I should call it strength, but in fact, let me just check. Yeah, it's, it's, I actually know it's now built a little bit of steam to the upside, which is a good thing. And I'm just saying, if I'm correct, 
then there's going to be an arch formation. And then we're going to see whether or not there's a pullback. Maybe I, I take about a week from here uh, where we you start to see it start to pull back and try to test the low that was made uh, in the S&P. I'm going to go to that for the cash because that's easier. Most of you have the cash index. And that would be at 49.53.56 the low of around about the 21st of April. Now what we're looking at is, that, so the S&P is up 28 at 51.56, you QQQ, one, two, three, QQQ, one, two, three. The QQQ is up 220 at 437.67. This is another one where the nine period moving average has held very nicely in the weekly chart. And today for the first time, the nine period exponential moving average has crossed positive. But wait a minute, this is a daily bar. I can't talk about it as if the day's closed. It is not. It's not even an hour into the, the first opening session. So I'm just saying if at the end of the day that L is still there, that's a big deal because then you can get this trend line coming right across here. That resistance, and I'll draw it in now because this is the beginning of the week. We want to know all our parameters. Parameter here yes says to me, if the QQQ is able to hold above inside track, repellent zone first it has to get there that means by tomorrow it has to get to 439.50 but by the end of the week or any time this week if it actually gets to 443.20 above this uh, trend line resistance all of a sudden that becomes support and that's going to be a big deal iwm on friday i told you i believe that uh, <clears throat> the thursday closed with the nine period moving average actually crossing positive and then Friday's confirmation, and today with a really big move, is telling me, and I spent a little time with subscribers talking about this on Friday, on Saturday when I did my overview, I said, there's a chance now that we get this rotation where um, stocks like a, a Microsoft, look, Microsoft's unchanged here. It's not participating at all. So I'm suspecting that, and I'll go to Amazon in a moment when I, Steve in the den asked me if I'd look at it. Um, there's lack of participation in leadership that there is a chance, and I'm just saying it's a chance, that the iShares Russell 2000 ETF actually starts to move higher. It was only, it was lagging a little bit. It started to lead, and then it was lagging on Friday. Today, at 1.32%, up 267 at 204.58, it's one of the better percentage leaders. Let me just glance through this. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. And that's a good sign. It's showing a little bit of leadership. And that just tells me that that monthly chart, this is barely the beginning of the month, but it's a nice green candle. And all I can say is if any time during uh, any, any day, any moment, there's a break above the high of March, which was at 2, 2.30... Five. Am I reading that correctly? Oh, that one. Oh, sorry. 211. I thought 235. What are we talking about? 211.88. That would be leg C. That'll be a really big positive for the overall market because finally we've got the small caps uh, moving nicely. I just want to see as we go into the break, XLF is moving up a little bit, uh, up 36 cents, but is the KRE moving now? Uh -huh. Okay, we'll talk about that. That's the same rotation that we've seen there. Maybe the finally the regional banks will be starting to move higher. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's up 144. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. We're just going to look. Remember 10.20 in the morning? That's where uh, the, new, the new session starts. It's like uh, you've got out of the way. You've got all that stuff that goes on from like 6 in the morning uh, going into the 8.30, well, if there's news or there wasn't any news today, economic news at 8.30. So this is going to be very important. What happens next? And I'm looking at this and suggesting to you, let me just move away from this, otherwise I'm liable to hit a sell or buy button. I shouldn't be doing that. Okay, so uh, within the context of um, just, I wanted to diverge because pe people have asked me, could you just periodically go through your intraday, uh, what you're looking at? Look, since right there at eight, at 2.20 this morning, remember it was 2.20 or 2.30 on Thursday, going into Friday morning, early Friday morning, and we had 12 hours of um, the nine period moving average being positive, it went all the way through overnight. Remember overnight, you always get this narrow trading band. I'd warned about that on Friday. <clears throat> and then what happened was um, it went pink. And that was the first time it went pink at 8.20, 8.10 last night. Um, there was a bit of a pullback, not much, but a bit, it did go pink, the nine period moving average. So the first time in 12, that was six, uh, I'm, get, I'm just doing it off the top of my head, about, 16 or 18 hours, it finally went pink. And then what happened was it went sideways, and then it turned up at about, what was that, eight, uh, 2 this morning, at 2.10 this morning, and it was green, 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 and it's still green, that 10-minute period exponential moving average. Remember, I make a big deal about this. Why do I do that? And right now we start to store peak E in the uh, leg, yep, peak E in the 10-minute chart, possible peak F in the in the five-minute chart, and a peak C1, I'm not able to type this in right now because I'm just pointing peak C1, C2, it's actually like a peak D, saying, hey, right now at 10.20, we could have a little bit of a pullback. And then what happens between now, and I would even say today's a little different, I'm going to say between 10.20 this morning, and I'm going to go all the way through till 12.20, maybe 12.45. That's what you see when you see another, another kind of, oh, what can I call it? Another phase in which there's a chance that you'd be looking at a rally attempt and what happens after, I would say today, probably is a little later, maybe 2.30 this afternoon, if the Dow is up 
about 120 points or more. No, I'm going to say 110 points or more. The S&P, which is up, to, and it's up 132 right now. The S&P, which is up 28, is up even just 18 points. That's going to allow for some buying into the close. But I think on a very short-term basis, one of the reasons why I said to subscribers, we're not going to do any new buying today. We're already, we, we, we've already added on Friday. <clears throat> nice, nice uh, positions. Um, I, I just I don't want to mess around with that and go in and out and in and out. So at this particular point, I think just a slightly overbought situation needs a little bit of a timeout. It might be more time than price. I'm not sure just yet. Uh, we'll see. So I want you to follow through the SMHs right now of 357. Testing the Chapman Wave. Oh, another technique I just need to show you. This is called the Chapman Wave Falling Axe Formation. Already to be sophisticated and get into the uh, technical books, I should probably call it a declining cone formation. And uh, it's actually a declining, expanding cone formation. Uh, just uh, my, my falling axe tells you exactly what it is. There's the handle. Then it starts to make lower, low, lower highs and much lower lows. And at a certain point, it finds a base of support and it starts to rally. If it takes out the upper declining line, it can go one to one to the upside from the breakout. Well, that's a huge move. That would say that from the low that was made in the SMHs of 198.44 on the uh, 19th of April, so that's 198.44. Let me just type that in. 198.44 on the. Oh, it doesn't matter. Let me just put that in. Right to where to 220. Uh, to, that's a lot. I mean, 220. It's over 20 points. Uh, to, to talk about the upside, no, I don't think we can go there right now. That's the pattern that would imply the one-to-one -one expansion. I don't see that right now. Even in the weekly charts, suggesting that it's acting very well, but because of that big red candle, until that big red candle is pierced and we start to trade at 231, that's 10 points from here, I have to just be limited in my upside projections. And I am saying I'm anticipating that it's going to be an arch formation. Now, MU mentioned by Jeff in the Tiger YouTube is doing very well today. Yeah, that has gone. If I can actually find, oh, there it is. I typed it in right here. Let me change that. Undo. Oh, <laughs> mess it up. Let's go to MU. MU, there it is. In leg D, above the chapter wave as the falling axe formation. This one's a little different, you see. And I like to think of a falling axe. It's the same direction, the same, not the direction, it's the same um, degree of angle. That's the most important thing. So in this particular instance, you can get the price move. But look at this, and I have to take it from, I always take it from, theoretically, the whole aspect of this falling exclamation is to get you a one-to-one -one from the outside of the upper declining trend line. And that would take you there. I'm always very cautious. I go step by step. I go to the first trough, and we've already reached that level. If it goes even a little higher, say to 122.36, it's a 120.32, right now at 5.62, that's, that's micron. Then I'm going to raise it, and I go to uh, the, the next level, which is usually a moving average, and that, that takes you to 125. So right now I'm going one step at a time. It's not using time. It's only using price. But in the meantime, it's gotten the price extension, and that's good. So it's acting, yes, Jeff, it's acting very well. I've spoken about this yesterday. I said until it breaks this inside track repellent line, we can't really talk about the upside and the MACD hasn't yet turned positive. Even now, it isn't positive. It's very close, but it's not there. But that relative strength I mentioned was starting to rally very nicely, the gray line. Stochastic's lagging. On balance volume's lagging. MACD's lagging. Nine period moving average hasn't yet crossed positive, and yet the relative strength is suggesting that there is something there. So that's important. Um, I'm just going to more or less look at the support level on Micron, and that's at 116. <clears throat> what would a show be without a sneeze, huh? I remember the late Dave White used to always have these sneeze as well. All right, so what we're looking at here is Micron's helping NVIDIA made that round number high and round number low at the close 762 on the 19th of April with a 756.06 low. And here it is 
you know, I just can't believe it. I looked at this and I said, is this after talking about the negative activity in the nine period moving average in NVIDIA, is this now going to actually move even higher? Yes, it's doing very nicely. That's the reason why I don't want to be looking at any anything on the short side just at this particular point. I just don't see a reason for it. A question came in about gold. So let me just show you this GDX. Nice move up, but it's getting to that same trend line resistance. A little different here because it's actually right there. So what we've got is trend line. And this trend line says that the round number, uh, wait, a uh, GDX. Uh, what, did I was, what was I looking at? Oh, 35.75 was the high of the tw uh, 12th of April. It comes all the way back down, not all the way, it's not a big deal, but it comes back to 32.20 on the uh, 23rd of April. And yet it's just bouncing. It's still not telling me that there's incredible strength, but there's a lot of support. Two different things, strength and support. I'll be back, Dow's up 143. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Keckstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the fund involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
All right, so let me just finish up here with the overview. T TLT, which is the iShares 20 Treasury Bond ETF, did come off the 87.50 low. It got to the chat wave inside uh, track propellant zone in the weekly chart, and it's got a leg, a gray leg A, nothing more than a gray leg A. That stochastic is pathetic at 14% in the weekly chart. Uh, the daily chart has improved to 61%, but it's still kind of weak. MACD is improving. Retro strength is improving. The um, uh, nine-period moving average is way under the 14. It hasn't crossed positive yet. Hmm, I'm watching this. I just think this is a balance. Uh, uh, looking at the weekly chart, it's going to take a lot to get even over the pink nine-period moving average of 90.86. If it does that, that's going to start an improvement, but it needs to do it. That's that. Uh, looking at uh, high-grade copper, high-grade copper is up uh, up 0.06 at 4.62, high level consolidation. Look at this, walking the 14, we're in the nine period moving average, just two days to touch the 14 period moving average, black 14 period moving average, look how strong that is. That's that's really good action. I'd say that last week that I was anticipating some kind of a sideways move in copper, but it hasn't broken down at all, it's just sideways. That's important. Now I needed to do, oh, I was saying XLF, that's the XLF is a financial, S&P Select Spider financial fund. Uh, doing okay, it's just above the inside track repellent zone. But finally, the KRE, just like the S&P and let's say the um, Russell 2000, there's just a slight improvement in the what was the weaker index, in this case, the weaker link. Look how it's holding much better at 50.15. Um, I think now it's starting to make the cup formation. And that says that it could target 53.19 it's at 50.18. As long as the 49 uh, support level holds this week, uh, in fact, I'd even say 49.50. If that level holds, there's a good chance it's going to work its way higher towards that 200 period moving average in the uh, weekly chart, which had a peak D uh, back in uh, November, December of last year before pulling back, got repelled from that line. So a question came in. Uh, FTNT. I did this the other day and I said, mm, it's not acting that great uh, because with that huge, I don't know whether it was news related uh, slump, but today it pulled back very sharply. Uh, sorry, Friday it pulled back. It gapped down and went all the way to the 50. I'll give you the exact number because it was tootling along in the 63s. Like suddenly it comes down and it goes to 50. 58.79. That, that is, I mean, that's a pretty big pullback, right? 58.79. And what I say is you've got to wait a little bit to see if there's an inside bar. What happens next is really the issue because the weekly charts are making lower lows and lower highs. And there's a couple of big red candles which says that the weight of selling has so far been to the downside. So I'm just going to say that the weekly chart is the one that went pink the other day. Um, on Friday, that confirmed the 9 p moving average under the 40. I think it's going to struggle. <clears throat> and until uh, 40 net Inc., which is Security Solutions, and that whole area, P, A, and W, is one that I actually kind of liked. If I can find where I typed it right there. Um, P, A, and W. Um, trading up 2.49 at 298. Yeah, this is an interesting one. It was a leader for a long time, made a, made a high. Um, it's had splits. Look, when I wrote it in Chapman Wave Roman Candle, uh, that was this candle right here, way back in January of 2022. And then it closed above it. That's always a good sign for a short, shorter term, even though it's a monthly chart, number of bars to the upside. So I think that this whole area is under pressure. So I'm just going to say FTNT. Um, as a trade, if you want to just get in on a daily basis, maybe, but I don't like it. I think that it's going to, if at any point in May, it trades even for a minute, not even an hour or a day, but a minute uh, in the 57, under 57, 60, like mid 57, just, it just touches that. It says, uh-oh, be careful, because looking out, uh, you don't have to go all the way to the 200 period moving average of 52.38, but that whole area here where they where it flipped to pink, from pink to green, um, so that means that an area of 56.94 is going to be absolutely key to hold. So I'm, I'd be watching that right now. You need to see by Wednesday or Thursday at the absolute latest Thursday, it has to be atta tackling the opening price of uh, Friday, which was 61. 
point eighty six. It doesn't sound like it's far away, but in this market, but for this stock, it could be. Now the next thing was Amazon. Amazon is trading right now down two cents at one eighty six point nine. Uh, yes, point nineteen. Looking like it wants to kind of double top a little bit in the weekly chart. I suspect it's going to go by one penny above 189.77 to extend leg C in May, and that's going to be really important. But at the same time, this huge gap with the chapter of green Roman candle and then a gap up after that is very bullish, just in daily, not weekly, but very bullish daily. And it says you can go at least another three to four sessions um, pushing higher and keeping the 182 area, which is the nine period moving average support as key support. So yeah, Amazon's acting very well. Uh, it's struggling a little bit today uh, when the general market is up quite nicely. But at the same time, that nine is over the 14 daily. The weekly is way over the 14. This is a very strong looking stock. So I hope that helps you. Next question came in. Yeah, isn't that interesting? I wrote this down. I have to get another page. I had a page once that just had specific stocks that had all the ingredients, the sexy ingredients of the, the environment. And here's one. Aero Environment Inc. Farm and Military Drone Switchblade is called. Um, I have loved it. I just forgot about it. How could I have forgotten about it? I was waiting and waiting here at the bottom when it was down the 140s for the nine period moving average. And to tell you the truth, until you typed it in, uh, Jeff, right now, you took pro very nice profits. Congratulations. Um, I just I forgot about it. But this is something you've got to put on your list because it is in play for 2024. It's really an important stock. It's doing. Uh, let me just look at this if I can get a sense of. Yeah, it's been around for a long time. I didn't even realize it was there. Hey, let me squeeze to see when it came public. There it is. Back in 2007, in the 20s. Look at that. Higher highs and higher lows. This is a really a wonderful stock. And I've got this as an F slash B with this Chapman Wave Instant Research. It works even in monthly charts. So I had a question if I can get to it, if I remember about Instant Restarts. If I could show a couple of more examples and just educate people in that methodology. Yeah, so this is really good. It's up. A, V, A, V is a symbol. Up 4.46 in 173.23. The all-time high was that big spike. I guess it was on news. The Chapman Wave Inverted Roman Candle. Ho, 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 ho. That says the target of 130 point, uh, no, 184.61 made in March. That's the target for May based on this candle right now. Very interesting. I'll be back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. 
Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds for both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. So just a couple of things here. Uh, one of our dentists said that his home has got strep throat, and I said he should check for COVID. I've got a number of friends who... Uh, were on flights uh, recently and then they got a sore throat or it seemed like a cold and then they turned out that they actually had COVID. They didn't feel like it was COVID, but they had this uh, th uh, strep throat. Anyway, so uh, yeah, let me just finish this up if I can just get back to where I was. One click here. There it is. Okay, so, um, so and that question there was on Palantir and actually Palantir for two days now I've been wanting to put it in, but I would have missed it on Friday because it gapped up, and I would have missed it on uh, today because it gapped up. Palantir Technologies develops data fusion platforms, but the reason why I wanted it earlier in the 22-23 area was because earnings come out today, and you never know with the stock. It could either be flying tomorrow at the open the market. Uh, it depends, of course, of course, what happens tonight when they with the earnings. Um, or it could just tank. It just you just don't know with the stock. It's it's made a nice U-turn, beautiful cup formation in the um, monthly and the weekly chart. Although this last pullback was quite serious, so I all I can say is that once you come out, I have stopped predicting what the stocks will do after earnings because, especially if you're having options, I don't know if you have options, but what happens is that you can have a fantastic report. But then comes the conference call or the interpretation of the conference call, and your stock that was up eight is suddenly down three, or what was down like we've seen recently, down 10, is now up five or 15 or 20. You can't tell. I can tell you that the chart right now, if it wasn't coming out with earnings, that the left side high that was made at 25, 25.48 on the 27th of March, if this leg sees it go above 25.28, then that 27.50 high that was made on the 5th of March becomes, even as soon as this week, becomes a target. But if it stalls and all of a sudden it fills this gap and you're trading and this thing's trading, not over overnight, tomorrow, this time tomorrow, if it's trading below 23.50, that's a problem. So I can't say if you're in it and you're long, I would just say... On some part of it, I'd put in a stop. I mean, the way it's looking now, it looks like it wants to make higher highs and higher lows, especially in the monthly chart. But you might have a little bit of choppiness uh, or even a sharp term pullback before it gets back on track. And this is what the stock loves to do. It has, look at this, has a big consolidation after making a peak D. Like in the weekly chart back in 2023, in the 21-ish area, boom, comes all the way down to 16 or even 15s has another rally all the way to the 27th, that's that last high, and then it's gone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is the 11th week, and it hasn't taken out that high, but it is the Chamway falling accident is making the cup formation. So the pattern says all the technicals in daily, weekly, monthly are very positive, that even if it has a pullback, it should regain that strength within a couple of weeks, but it does take some time after the pullback 
to regain strength. Parameters to look for tomorrow at this time at 10.45 uh, a.m. on Tuesday. And there's just a chance I might not be able to make it back. I have an appointment in the morning. And I've tried to organize it so that I'd get back in time. But I just might not be able to do it. And that means I'm telling you now what to watch for. And that is if Palantir is trading under 23.30, this time tomorrow, that's not a good sign. If it's over 25.80, that's a really much better sign. And those are the parameters to look at. Oh, so let's go back now. We were looking at, where was I? Mm -mm. Skipped as always. Oh, AVAV. So AVAV, fabulous move. Oh, I wanted to talk about this. You see this weekly chart, monthly chart right here? Here's a chapter with inverted Roman candle. I, my webinars, I go through that. I'll talk about it some other time. I'm not going to talk about it right now. Otherwise, other than to say, it's green at an all-time high. It's making a long wick, and then it pulls back. And now, for two months, it's gone above the closing price of uh, March. But most importantly, for the first time, halfway into the wick, halfway into the wick is the long wick itself is one of 165.50, and it's it did that on Friday. I forgot to look at this completely. If I wish I had looked at it, I don't know what I would have done, but. Uh, on Friday, it did that, and that suggests if on a shorter time frame, that's a very short time time, time frame going to the daily, doesn't matter. I'm just saying, and even the weekly chart, oh, look, even on the weekly chart, the high was 168.80. Yeah, so that just says there's a very good chance that within two bars, that's this is the second bar, there's going to be a test of the all-time high. In this case, the all-time high is one. Oh, round number open, 135, the week of the 8th of March has a high of 184.61, and after that, it pulls back to 141. Isn't this interesting? Yeah, nice pattern. I like it. All right, thank you for bringing it to my attention. Uh, now, what we're looking at, what, what did I say? Oh, Amazon, did I tell? Yes, we did Amazon. Did I? Oh, for FTNT, I didn't finish it up. So Fortinet, making lower lows and lower highs. I would just, if, oh, 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 I forgot. You might be short. Am I correct? You had a short position. If you are short, I'd stay short. I'd put a stop on some part of the position, kind of at the 61.08 level, just to lock in some kind of a profit. But I would stay short. This doesn't look good at all. Oh, uh, I, I forgot that you might be short. I, you may, if you are. Um, but in the meantime, it's not acting well at all. So now, talking about not acting well at all, I need to, to look at um, Apple. So Apple is not acting well at all from the high that was made back in December, just under 200, when it comes all the way down to 164.05 on the 20th of April. But wait a minute, it has 165 round number close. You remember how I make a big deal about the round numbers at the top? How about the round number at the bottom? So it's gone from 164.08 to Friday's high of 186, was it? 187, round number high. You can't make this up, right? 187, round number high. I'm calling that a peak C. Pulls back today, and the weekly chart is suggesting that there's a lot of work to be done for that nine-period moving average to, to push uh, positive, but... Um, Having taken out Friday's low, it says to me that unless Apple by Wednesday, I give it the whole day of Wednesday, so whole day Tuesday, whole day today, whole day Tuesday, whole day Wednesday, if it can't just tag once the 180, 185 level, but in fact makes a lower low than today's low of 181.63, I think that you can see it test the 181 to 180 level in the next few days. So the big move up, very nice. Is it a buy signal to buy mode? Um, I would have to call it a buy signal, and I'd have to put a, give it a, an up arrow, only because everything's working. The only thing that's not is the 65% of the, at this at relative, sorry, the stochastics at 65%, but everything else is doing very nice. So Apple does ups, upside momentum after what? Um, it, all of all of 2024 up until 
two weeks ago, three weeks ago, it was just making lower lows and lower highs. This is a good sign. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, Tiger Nation's Hour. Tigers, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side by side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tiger's Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side by side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. I'm back, guys. I'm on the two aspects of 31, and we're watching very closely to see what happens by Wednesday this week. Do we rally and then we start to stall going into mm. Thursday, Friday? Does it continue high? This is going to be a very important week in that sense of follow through. <clears throat> Hood, which is Robin Hood. So does Robin Hood also come out with earnings today? It's either today or tomorrow, I think. Acting quite nicely. Yeah, it's up 24 at 18.18. 18. I've been looking for this area of the uh, 1630 to 1530. That's where I want to become more interested in it. I almost said let's, let's start a position the other day, but... Um, I'm just not sure, but it really should get good earnings because that BTC, which uh, Bitcoin had a fantastic first quarter. Now I think it's starting to stall. Uh, Bitcoin is up 1,500 and 54,000. Is that 64? Yeah, 64,090 and uh, coming back from the intraday high. So I'm just saying that I think that you're starting to see a little bit of rotation, and the rotation is including. Uh, Bitcoin at this particular point. Just I want to see where gold is right now. Gold is trading up 21. Yeah, you look at that nine period moving average. It's acting like a resistance. So just not a big deal. Just a kind of a breather here in gold. 
until the next move up. I think it can go on for a little bit longer. So this rotation is very important. And I just want you to see what the IWB uh, is doing. That's the Russell 1000 A peak, A peak, B leg C. Uh, very nice rally up uh, for the 1000. It's up 1.76, but it's only up 0.62%. I want to see. I don't know if I'm going to be correct, but right now, the IWM, the Ross 2000, is showing a little bit more relative strength. If that can continue uh, all week, then we, I'm just looking at this as a rotational aspect. I, I have to admit that we are along the IWM, but that's not the point. The point is, how does it act going to midweek? Can it continue to, can it actually be a leader? That's going to be a change for the first time. Thank you for Steve Rhodes. Should be a great, uh, great show by Steve coming up. Great programming here at TFN and check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. I will see.